All right, guys. Um, yeah, I want to talk to you really quick, uh, and uh, not that you really care, but I really wanted to stick my neck out for uh, for for Jason Freed and and uh, and base camp. I know there's a lot of people out there that are really upset with what he wrote on his latest blog post and. I tell you, to be honest with you, I could not be happier. Um, this whole thing about politics and allowing these warring factions to to just go on and on um, at work is 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 completely ridiculous. I um, I'm really, really, really glad that him and David both. Um, I call him David Hasselhoff. <laughs> I know that's not his name, but um, it's just something that it's the way that I remember his last name. But but Jason and David both, I wanted to say thank you so much for um, for what you did. And it just the 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 words of appreciation. It's very hard for me to to express just the sheer. Uh, strength, the bravery, and the the willingness to, to be criticized. Um, you you overcame that, and you went out on a limb, and I I love you for that, and I appreciate you greatly. Um, we may not always agree on on everything, you know, policy wise, and um, I know that there was a couple of times here and there on on Twitter that, um. You know, for example, um, I didn't necessarily agree with some of the content that was coming through. I believe it was rework um, your your podcast and and one of your um, one of your podcast editors or producers um, disagreed with me because I really came for content and I felt like I got lectured about um, understanding people's gender pronouns and various other things like that and um, while that's all good and well and I think that it's it has its time and its place especially you know as it relates to work and as it relates to respecting other people um, certainly I felt like that particular podcast had gone a little bit too far and I had tweeted about it and um, the individual with the last name Wong or whoever it was um, and actually I, I pulled it up here just for reference um, yeah, Waylon Wong. Um, anyway, it's not a huge deal, but there was just a little back and forth. And yeah, um, those tweets have, have since been deleted, but but it's right here. I just said this was on January 13th, 2020. I was so, so excited to listen to the Basecamp podcast, but was disappointed when the entire show was about terms I'm not even f- familiar with, like non-binary or black um i mean who pays attention to this anymore i thought it was 2020 um sad that we can't just do good work and i really still stand by that again i 100 percent have no issues with with anybody you know living their life however they want i just felt that there was a direction at base camp that was going you know, a little bit askew, in other words, not focusing on, on the work. And with the latest blog that, that you put out, Jace, um, and, and especially, I mean, I know you, you went to school down, down at U of A and, and, um, you know, I'm down in Tucson. So I felt like we've kind of got a little, little bit of a connection there. And, and I certainly appreciate that. But, um, yeah, dude, I love it, man. Um, just a couple of things that you said that was just so killer. Um, yeah, sensitivities are at an 11, and every discussion uh, remotely re- relates to politics, advocacy, or, or society at large quickly spins away from pleasant, and you shouldn't have to wonder if staying out of it means you're complicit or wondering into it means you're a target. I... I couldn't have said it better. I really couldn't have. I mean, I like I said, I there was a little bit of a moment there where I was getting concerned that you guys were 
really going to go the way of Rand Fishkin. Um, I mean, that that dude is an absolute joke, in my opinion. Um, Rand Fishkin does nothing but spout on Twitter all day long about um, who is the biggest and best social justice you know, advocate. And while the, all that's good and well, and I wish him the best, um, Rand, if you're watching this, dude, you need to set up another Twitter account, okay? Nobody wants to hear you go on and on and on about um, how somebody did an amazing job with inclusivity or, you know, intersectionality. Um, go back to talking about digital marketing and SEO and stick to what you're good at. Um, and I've followed you since 2009, so I'm not some, you know, new guy to the market and I'm just learning about you. Um I've seen you progress down this rabbit hole for way too long, and the fact that you even mention anything to other people on Twitter about, you know, Jason and or David or their company, and you're responding to people uh, in some kind of a wishy-washy way, explaining to them that um, they might need to perhaps find maybe a better um, role model. Um, it's 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 completely ridiculous. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, Rand, you can just go back into the background and um, and stop advocating for people navigating away from base camp just because you you don't agree with it. This is exactly the type of thing that that Jason and David are actually against. Um, this kind of pitting against each other for no apparent reason. Um, last I checked, we love we love products. Um, we love everything digital, and can't we just stick to that? And I think, you know, four or five years of going on, and I haven't even made a post on Facebook since um, literally, I think it was uh, the summer of 2015. Not one post, um, not one like, not one comment, not one nothing. I may have liked somebody else's fan page that they asked me or business page that they asked me to like to support their local business. But other than that, I haven't done anything whatsoever. And the main reason is, is because I'm sick of everybody getting everything twisted. Um, and I'll post up some screenshots here as, as I'm talking through this. Uh, and, and I'm not the best on camera. I don't always look at the camera. I don't have the right setup. So you're going to have to forgive me on this one, but, but, um, yeah, and all the other people that are chiming in, um, I could go through dozens and dozens of names who are, are so disappointed. Um, you know, there's another uh, uh, article here on on Medium from Emily Potast. Um, I guess it's like Potash. I'm not really sure exactly how to pronounce her last name. Um but they're, she's basically saying that this is the wrong move, that um, the title is Basecamp is Failing Its Own Future. This is entirely untrue. If you go back to the post, Jason basically um, just wants to s focus more on building the work and less on, on policies and politics. Um, I've heard the argument, sure, that you know this... You know, there are some people perhaps that that's it just makes up who they are and that's fine. That can make up who you are and you can be a political advocate in whatever sphere or spectrum that you want to live in, whether it's right, left, center, left of center, whatever. Um, and I'm not here to discuss that. In fact, I mean, even when I hire people and I hire contractors, I mean, the very first thing I say is, is that I don't I don't give a crap about what you believe in, what you don't believe in. Um, your God, your lack of God, um, your, you worship Satan, um, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the work, just the work. Um, and sure you can draw inferences and, um, you can draw perspectives perhaps from your, you know, what I would consider to be your worldview. Um, but it doesn't mean that you have to always be talking about it with other people. And I think a mature person understands that. And again, kudos. Um, another couple things just real quick 
because I don't want this to be really too long. Let me bounce over here to, um, yeah, to RAN. Here we go. Uh, this is April 26th. I'm honestly in no mood to prove the point, but there's plenty of excellent discussion from folks in marginalized communities, former customers of theirs, fans of their books, writings, and ex-employees on here on Twitter you can find. I guess he's replying to Will Schroeder um, at startups.com. Um, where specifically do you think they compromised values? This is actually, this is this is the whole fakery and mockery of it all, is um, the fact that even Will Schroeder or Rand or whoever else is saying that they have compromised values, this is actually the sick and most twisted thing of it all, is that actually their values are so high that they want to focus more on the work and the product that they're building rather on everything else. And I mean, I can, again, I can guarantee you that, that Jason and David and I don't see eye to eye on every single, you know, political um, discussion. I mean, I, I can almost put money on it. I'd bet my house on it, but it, it never mattered to me because I always knew that what Jason and David were building even if you look at their product, it's a bit archaic in the way it's designed, but it's designed that way for a specific reason because there's a philosophy that's coming through in in the product itself, and, and it is about the work. It's about doing the work, and it's about allowing people to live a life of um, uh, remotely that that they can use – their bartered time with their friends and families or however they want to distribute their time based on a tool that allows them to, to do just that. And it's just, it's absolutely sickening to see people um, come after them in this sort of way. And um, uh, especially people that are um, as, as well known um, as Rand, although it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, another another couple of ones that uh, is just absolutely horrid um, is you know is is this individual right here, Alida Solis. Likewise, for years I looked up to DHH and and Jason. Um, not anymore. Um, not anymore because why? That's what I want to know. Not anymore because why? You have some kind of an issue with them not wanting to hear political discussions. Um, I could tell you firsthand that I um, have been just greatly affected by, you know, not just the pandemic, but the, you know, the last four to five years. Um, you know, my mental stability has probably taken a turn for the worse, um, for the worst. And and this is just, you know, you can ask anybody in my circle of friends, clients. Um, my productivity maybe hasn't been as good. My um, attention to detail maybe hasn't been as good. I've been distracted, um, not just online, but but offline as well, because I've been preoccupied with po really political discussions that I should not even be concerned about. And um, I think what they're doing is is they are they're providing a, a safety net, really. To, to individuals that might be susceptible to um, perhaps um, allowing those those type of things to fester mentally and um, again maybe if you if you don't battle you know any anything like this and and you can just move on with your day and, and nothing bothers you um, well then you know kudos to you and, and more power to you but I mean the vast majority of people uh, in my opinion, are not that way. They're not built that way. You know, things bother them, and they, um, and it affects it. Aff it affects the bottom line of the company. Um, it affects the top line too, for that matter. It affects <laughs> every line um, on on your on your balance sheet um, or your cash flow sheet, whatever you're analyzing for the day. Um, if you want to get technical, but but again, I just wanted to reach out to. Um, 
you know, to Jason and, and to David and, and just let you know, man, I, dude, I appreciate you guys a ton and, um, what you're doing is amazing and, um, I fully support you and don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the naysayers. Keep doing your thing. And I know that you guys will come out on top and I don't want to analyze the other things that were in the blog post. Um, but don't back down and, uh, you're doing a great job. Take care.